Space Chronicles, in partnership with the European Space Agency. For my ninth birthday, I was given a book. It was a book my mother gave it to me. My mother was always wanted to be a scientist and she hadn't been able to become one for economic circumstances. She gave me a book about the planets. My father, who was an architect, uh, he, uh, he re really disapproved of it because at the time I hadn't perhaps strong scientific inclinations. I remember my father saying, well, you're trying to corrupt him into becoming an astronomer. Of course she was. <laughs> Monuments to Sir Francis Drake, the scourge of the Spanish Armada, and the intrepid colonists who set off in the Mayflower for the New World. Plymouth, in the west of England, is drenched in nautical history. It's here that the European Space Agency's Director of Science calls home. What I like about Plymouth is also one of the things I like about my job. People left here. They sailed from here to do various things, to, to, to build new worlds. Uh, frankly, my job is about thinking about new worlds far, far away. I'm sure some of the motivations I feel that, that people need to explore the universe uh, is some of the motivation that led people to sail from here across the ocean, not knowing where they were going or what they would find. A decade ago, Southwood was head of the team that built the magnetometer on board Cassini-Huygens, a joint ESA-NASA mission that continues to reap rich scientific rewards to this day. He sees it as a role model for the future of space exploration. Cassini is a wonderful example. In my team on Cassini, we had people who at the beginning of the program came from behind what was called the Iron Curtain. The first cooperations involving Hungary, for example, were in my instrument. So a key point of the new cosmic fission plans is international cooperation. Cosmic Vision is ESA's competition to find the most scientifically relevant mission proposals for the coming decades. The agency has two priorities, to understand the mechanisms of the universe and learn more about our solar system. Both require teamwork. One of the purposes of space science is to learn how to work together, how the Americans work with Europeans, how European teams work with Russians or with Chinese or Indians or Japanese. Then you've learned the vocabulary of communication. And don't get me wrong, the cultures are very different, but you learn to work together. You learn where your strengths lie and where you can rely on the strengths of others. Once the main themes were decided, scientists from across Europe set forth their proposals for 2015-2025. 51 projects made it through the first round of selection. If we just said, give us the best ideas you can, they would come up with very, very big, expensive ideas because scientists are certainly not limited in imagination. So we brought up the idea of, well, if you get a smaller mission, an M mission, a medium mission, you're likely to see it fly <laughs> earlier than a large mission. That's, this may be common sense to an ordinary person, but to a scientist it needs to be explained. The proposed cosmic vision missions were split into the fields of astrophysics and solar system science, they were then divided up into M medium-term and L long-term projects. From the 51 in the first round, a total of eight have made the cut, four M missions and four L missions. All are exactly the kinds of projects Southward feels ESA should be tackling. The scientific goals are almost unquestionably fundamental. You could never uh, have the nerve to propose something that might cost uh, uh, 600, 700 million euros just from our contribution and then you think of involving other countries, maybe you're talking certainly over a billion euros, you've got to be able to stand up and honestly say this will change the way we see our universe. Uh, 
I'm just the master of ceremonies. I mean, people think I'm in charge of everything. Well, I'm in charge of the building of everything. With, I'm also in charge of trying to make sure that the, uh, the bidding process is fair, to make sure that everybody gets a fair hearing and that the criteria used for discussion are scientific. The final decisions must be to do the best possible science. The problem is science opens too many doors for the future, so you've then got to rationalize which direction you do when. Because once you make the commitment to build something, it starts costing you big money, and uh, really big money. I mean, the, 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 in the stage we're at at the minute with the current missions, the next two or three years, we, have, we spend maybe 1% or so of what we ultimately would spend on such missions. We can afford a lot of time and energy with that small amount of expenditure. Once you commit, and you start bringing teams of engineers from all across Europe together to do something, and you start paying their salaries, etc., then you've got the train rolling down the track. What will happen now is that we'll start studying the various missions that have been put together, and I don't think, I think many of them, or maybe even all of them in the end, will come to realization. But the first thing is, which one comes first? So this is a very exciting time because you have a real conflict of ideas. At the same time, you've got terrific technological goals. It, you suddenly know, ah, we're really going to have to work on that. And so how are we going to tackle that one? Tough decisions have to be taken, pros and cons weighed up. The stakes are high, but the result for ESA and the space science community in general should be worth every penny. There are two grand challenges in astronomy, in my view, at this time. Number one, I think, is the fact that we now know the universe is full of planets, that stars with planets are very common. This must make anyone think, does that mean there's another Earth out there? The other thing is to understand how we got from a Big Bang, where everything was chaos and everything was more or less uniform in all directions, down to the sort of lumpy universe we have now. All of us came out of the stars, came out of the galaxies, in fact, came out of the Big Bang. Uh, for me, uh, there, it's a challenge anyone can understand, and we have our part to play in telling all human beings where we came from, what we're about, and what is out there, the mysteries beyond our planet.